the Contec CMS 8000 contains a backdoor. The Contec CMS 8000 being this device here, it looks like your traditional patient monitor you would see in a hospital where they have your resting heart rate, your blood oxidation, maybe your resting respiratory rate, and all that good data. Uh, CISA, America's Cyber Defense Agency, recently found that this device, which is used, by the way, in the US and in the EU, contains a variety of backdoors. So the two big ones being an embedded backdoor function that gives a particular threat actor the ability to run remote code arbitrarily and modify the configuration of the device. Not only this, but the device is also leaking patient data to that threat actor as well. Following reporting a vulnerability by an external researcher as part of CISA's coordinated vulnerability disclosure process, a CISA research team tested three contact firmware packages. The research team discovered what resembles a reverse backdoor within all three firmware packages. And when they say reverse backdoor, what this means is typically when you say the word backdoor, it implies a way to get into a device. Think of your, your house, right? If you have a backdoor or somewhere that someone can sneak in, they have to know where the backdoor is. They have to come to you. A reverse backdoor is when when the device is beaconing out, it's calling home and saying, hey, I'm over here and reaching through the network, getting to the internet and eventually out to China to tell the threat actor, I'm over here, what would you like me to do? The worst kind of backdoor. A reverse backdoor within all three firmware packages, the reverse backdoor provides automated connectivity to a hard coded IP address from the Contec CMS 8000 devices, allowing the device to download and execute unverified remote files. Now, typically when you have an embedded device like this, like this is a router, for example, right? It's just a broken down router. You'd use this to plug into your internet. You'd have your ISP plug into here and you'd have internet access. It's very common for these devices to call home and ask for firmware updates. There's nothing weird about that. It does start to get a little more code smelly, a little more what the hell is going on when you start talking about hard coded IP addresses. And if you dig deeper, publicly available records show that the IP address is not not associated with a medical device manufacturer or a medical facility, but a third party university. So the device is not calling out to contact. It's not calling out to Linksys, for example, for this router. It is calling out to a random university somewhere in China and giving that university the ability to arbitrarily run code on that device. Why would they want that? And that's a question for later on in the video. But after reviewing the firmware code, the team determined that the functionality is very unlikely to be an alternative update mechanism, exhibiting highly unusual characteristics that do not support implementation of a traditional update feature. The reason that these guys even decided to look at this device, there was a TCP SYN going out to some random IP address every time this device booted up and they probably made them a little suspicious. They pulled the firmware out of the device and they revealed this back door. Now they give the technical breakdown real quick. If you're asking how did they get access to the source code for this device, this actually isn't the source code. This is Ghidra. Ghidra is the reverse engineering framework written by the NSA. So this is Ghidra's best guess at what the C code of the device looked like. And here you have your traditional if else or if tree where if conditions are met, we keep going along in the code. And so what happens is when the, when the uh, binary starts up, they have this one program that does does a series of system commands. If config eth0 up, what that's gonna do is literally turn on the ethernet jack for the device. So if it's plugged in, it'll turn it on, it'll get an IP address and it'll continue doing its thing. The next one is where it gets a little, little hairy. Um, mount no lock TNFS blacked out IP address to mount. What's happening here is it is mounting the mount directory to some hard coded IP address slash PM with a network file share. So basically this is where the device is calling out to a hard coded IP address and opening a folder. Now, opening a folder, not a super huge issue, right? We're not super worried about that. But what it does further is where it gets a little hairy. We access mount monitor. So it's checking to see, is this folder set up in a way that we have the files in the right order, that we it's in the good state. And then what they do is they copy all of the files off of that drive into opt bin and then overwrite the start binary with the start monitor binary from the file share. What this is doing is completely overwriting the firmware of the device with the firmware provided by this university. It is not uncommon for embedded devices to beacon home and to download new software. Right? Again, any device you have that has a firmware package will likely do this at some interval. It does get a little smellier when they're doing a hard coded IP address and they're not even using a, like a package download system. It's just like a flat 
file share. It is even weirder when this file share does not have credentials associated with it. It could be the case that if you wanted to, given why they censored this IP address, you could upload files to the share and potentially use that to backdoor anybody that uses the IP addresses uh, firmware. And then also it just, it's even weirder, like the most weird, obviously, that this device is being updated, not by contact or whatever it is, uh, yeah, contact the, the manufacturer, but by some random IP address in China associated with the university. But what's even more concerning is the patient data spillage. When the CMS 8000 completes its startup routine, it will automatically beacon to the same IP address that is hard-coded. Once a connection is established, the patient information is then transmitted via port 515 to the IP address. And I'll zoom in here. You can see you have the name of the physician, the patient number, the hospital department that they're in, the patient uh, admit date, the date they got into the hospital, and the patient's name and their date of birth. Basically an entire dossier of why they're in the hospital. You can deduct that from the hospital department. The date they were admitted, their name and how old they are is all being transmitted over plain text to this university. And the mitigations obviously are to, first of all, disconnect your patient monitors from the internet. They have functionality like Wi-Fi or cellular, turn those off if you don't need them. Now you may want to know like, why do you need this in the first place? It is very common for hospitals to have IP enabled everything so that the nurses in the center of the ward, for example, wherever you're at, like the birthing ward or like whatever, um, they can monitor everybody. And so they don't have to have somebody in the room at all times. If for some reason, God forbid, the vitals of the patient was to go to zero, they would have some centralized monitoring that would allow them to freak out and then go into the room and take care of it. What makes this particularly concerning is it gives this university the opportunity to say, hmm, person that we don't like, Padre D, he isn't a big fan of our government. It would be a shame if his vital tracking was not able to work properly. Wouldn't it be a shame if we just pushed a bad firmware update to this device such that if Mr. Padre's, you know, uh, resting heart rate or pulse oximeter went to like 60% if we just didn't tell anybody about it? That's where you get to with vulnerabilities in medical software. You get to like almost assassination as a service type software where like if you don't like the person, you can just bloop, turn off their monitor and now no one knows how healthy they are. Not a great place to be. Now, if you're in the case where maybe you work for a hospital or maybe you uh, you deal with these devices, first of all, stop, get new ones. Um, also be aware that not only is it a context CMS 8000, but the FDA warns that a company that sells it, um, a company resells it as an Epsimed MN120. So any of these are on the hook. Look, man, if it's happening in this device, I would not be shocked if other devices from similar manufacturers, from similar countries are doing the same thing, okay? And again, it's one thing to have like a beacon out, get me code because I'm the manufacturer. It's another thing to have a, hi, I'm a weird IP address. Um, also, now we know exactly who was on this particular monitor. Feels a little weird. Anyway, guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you like this kind of stuff, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, trying to hit a million subs. We're going to get there. And we'll see you in the next video where I talk about a similar set of backdoors. We'll see you there.